Hey guys, before we get into the video, I want to clarify what's going on. I had made a review of the runway room, and this is my second draft of the review of the case. For those of you who may have found the video through the playlist, this video is made after I finished reviewing the unspeakable story, and some of you may be confused as to why I've redone the review for this case. While truth be told, I don't think my initial video did the case justice. I still agree with a lot of the points I made, but at the end of the day, I don't agree with my overall rating and how I feel about the case as a whole. As such, there are two different parts to this video. The first part of it is exactly the same as it was when I first uploaded it. However, I've changed the end of the video to better reflect my thoughts about the case, so even if you saw my initial upload of this review, I recommend you at least go check out the end of this video, so here's the timestamp for that. If you're new and have never seen this review before, then don't worry and enjoy the entire video. The Adventure of the Runaway Room is that one case from every game. Not the 70th instance of third case syndrome. No, this case is almost universally praised. It gets a lot of praise for changing up the formula and adding an element of distrust. The investigation portion of the case can barely even be called an investigation. What makes this small portion of the game fun is that it's quick and to the point. You get introduced to the beautiful setting of London and you're thrown into a trial immediately. We get a test where we must earn a not guilty verdict to stay in Britain, and there's also some mystery built up with the Sogi's true mission, since Strongheart has a strong reaction to it. The case continues to be immersive in many ways. First you got the characters. Magnus McGilded initially seems like a friendly defendant, and what makes him interesting is that he plays off the other characters and the setting itself. McGilded has a name for himself as a generous man, and the jurors comment on how he's such a noble person. It's inconceivable to them that he could have killed someone. Then you have Van Zeeks, and two interesting mysteries follow our new prosecutor. One is the Reaper's Curse. Every defendant prosecuted by Van Zeeks has died. The second is his return to court. It's been five years since Van Zeeks entered the courtroom, and now he's come back to prosecute this case. These questions get you thinking. What's so special about this omnibus case? Strongheart gave us this mission, and now this prosecutor makes his return to prosecute McGilded? And it doesn't stop there, because Van Zeeks reveals the true nature of McGilded and how McGilded earned his fortune. Again, the reason why McGilded is so powerful here is because it impacts London as a whole. We've just been thrown into this new setting that's been described as a lavish place where everyone lives in prosperity, and already, we're starting to see its shadows. The jurors are used effectively, as they're more than just people who are deciding on the verdict based on the evidence. How they feel about McGilded as a person constantly shifts around, and their verdicts follow accordingly. There's a state of confusion in the courtroom, not only with the jurors, but with the gallery as well. You see how this is immersive? There's so many perspectives from different characters, and there's a lot to think about. However, it doesn't even end there. Since we're in a completely different courtroom, everything is fresh. Visually, we now have fire being used to decide verdicts, which is really cool. The courtroom in general looks different. We have a new judge. We have the six jurors. With the jury, we have a new gameplay mechanic. The summation examination. The summation examination is excellent. You're literally convincing the jury by pitting their statements against each other. Now, I do have a problem with the gameplay in The Great Ace Attorney 1. What I've noticed with the cross-examinations in this game is a very boring and repetitive pattern. Basically, this is how you play the game. You press every statement, then one of your presses will lead to another statement being added, and then you present evidence on the added statement. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's common to every Ace Attorney game, isn't it? Here's the problem. The great Ace Attorney 1 literally does this for every testimony. It is so rare to find a testimony where you can just present evidence right away. This is a problem for two reasons. The first is pacing. Pressing statements is going to lead to more fluff dialogue because usually most of the dialogue from pressing doesn't help and they aren't all that entertaining to read. This can make the cases feel slower. The second problem is that it takes away that element of deduction that earlier games had. If the game is just going to make you press all the time just to add a new statement, chances are you're going to need to present evidence on the new statement. 
There's not a lot of deduction needs to progress with the case. The pursue mechanic doesn't help either. You just wait for someone to react by pressing until a new statement is added. It's a very pointless mechanic. Now let's compare this with games like the original Phoenix Wright trilogy. In these games, they do have sections where you need to present statements, but there are also many testimonies where you can just present evidence right away. This variety in the gameplay makes you think about if the contradiction is already there or if you have to get more information. And this isn't even a difficulty thing either. I'm not saying this game has to be challenging. Both the first Ace Attorney game and this game are designed in a way where the first four cases are supposed to be easy. That's completely fine because they are the first within their series and have to get as many people into the series as possible. That being said, the gameplay in the original Phoenix Wright game was much better because it has a better mix of presenting and pressing. So I brought up my complaints with the gameplay, but what's my point? Well, the summation examination is the best mechanic in the entire game because it breaks away from the cross-examination problem entirely. In this case, there's a mix of pitting the juror statements immediately and pressing for more info. Not only that, even if you have to press the jurors, the section is very quick and there's also a satisfying element of bringing people to your side. I also like the witnesses a lot. I can't tell you why I found characters like Fairplay, Beppo, and Lady first engaging, but I did think their dialogue was fun. Now we get to Gina, and here's where the case takes a turn. So she smoke grenaded the court, and now she's testifying about what really happened. She's allied with McGilded, and the two of them form a truce when we realize something strange. There's a blood stain in the omnibus that was never there before. And all of a sudden, McGilded is using that to argue that the victim was pushed from the top of the omnibus. He, he's clearly lying. McGilded becomes furious when Ryunosuke sides with the truth, and we saw the omnibus without the bloodstain for ourselves. This is an interesting situation, because Ryunosuke is throwing his chance to study in Britain for the sake of finding the truth. This also means giving up his best friend's mission, so Ryunosuke's pursuit has a lot of weight on the narrative. So all we have to do is prove McGilda tampered with the evidence. And this is where I feel the case takes a dip. I really don't like the ending. For context, the judge says the trial has to end because we can't prove the bloodstain is forged. As a result, he gives a not guilty verdict. I've discussed the logistics of this verdict with a lot of people, but I'm still not convinced that this verdict makes sense. Why would you end the trial this fast? You can get more testimony from people in Scotland Yard. We may not sway the case with their testimonies alone, but it doesn't hurt to call them on the off chance that we can find a clue through more cross-examinations. Another thing that's not mentioned is if the victim had bruises on their body. If the victim fell from the top of the omnibus, you'd expect bruises on the body as he fell from a high place. However, the autopsy does not mention this at all. Then there's the bloodstain. Look at the real bloodstain, and then look at the forged bloodstain. They're different colors, which indicates that the real one is dry, and the forged one is wet. You can argue that this is just to show the player that this bloodstain is forged, but considering it's been days since the crime happened, this should be a notable difference to the characters within the game as well. If it's been a few days since the crime happened, the real blood should be more dry. With all these factors at play, the judge randomly giving a not guilty verdict doesn't make much sense. Now you could argue that the judge was one of the people that was bribed. I've heard many people make this argument, but the problem is, there's nothing suggesting that the judge was in cahoots with McGilded. If he truly was bribed and rushed the verdict, we should hear someone say something was off with the judge. Or we should at least see the judge show hints of being bribed, but there's nothing to suggest that. I mean at one point, the guy was going to give a guilty verdict. The only reason he stopped is because Susato pulled out a summation examination, which is a mechanic that wasn't used in court for many years and something she happened to find within her handbook. As such, I find it ludicrous to believe the judge was one of the people bribed. It feels like the case ends randomly just to push the story in a certain direction. That being said, overall, I still really like the case. Initially, I gave it a 7 out of 10 because the ending really soured things. However, a 7 out of 10 isn't a reflection of how great the case really is. Because again, it's an amazing case apart from the ending. If the majority of the case is so good, then a 7 out of 10 is just underselling the case. Thus, I give the case an 8.5. Yeah, that's a big improvement, but it's really damn good. Again, the ending is sour just because it feels like the case has a lot more to go, 
It's like they ended the case halfway through, but I just can't deny how fun the case is before that. The world building is at its peak. I love how the game addresses wealth and corruption through characters like McGilded, Gina, Fairplay, and Beppo. And I love how the jurors and gallery are used to show that the everyday citizen can be influenced and lied to very easily. I mean, this would be my favorite case in the game, were it not for the ending, so I think that says a lot. And yeah, that's about it. These are my refined thoughts of the adventure of the runway room. After looking at the case once more, it's definitely one of the more fun cases in the game, along with the adventure of the Unbreakable Speckled Band. Although looking at comments and general opinions, I've come to find out that case 2 is not popular at all, which is very surprising to me. That is easily one of my favorite cases in the entire series, but many people don't agree with me on that one. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll try preparing the review series for The Great Ace Attorney 2. There's definitely a lot of fun things to talk about regarding that game, so yeah, stay tuned for those in a few months, and goodbye.